I just got back from my monthly store championship where I went 5-0 with Void Toya. And this deck was an absolute blast to play. So before I de-sleeved it to get ready for Attack on Titan, I want to make a quick deck profile on it. The first question is, why Toya? Why did I pick this character for my last major event of this meta? And the answer is actually not the character itself, but the five difficulty secret rare action from League of Villains, Hold Hostage. This says, on your rival's turn, your rival reveals their hand. Choose a card revealed this way and remove it. If a rival attack deals damage this turn, they may destroy uh, one foundation to add the removed card to their hand. Remove this card when it leaves your card pool. Now, when this was first revealed, everybody thought this was going to be crazy. And then it almost never sees play today. And I think it's actually very, very underrated, although I've never played a Hold Hostage deck. So tonight was all about putting Hold Hostage to the test. I figured that the best character to run an action like this would be a defensive seven-hander because of this bottom part of this ability that says if any rival attack deals damage, they could destroy a foundation, not a big cost, and add back that removed card to their hand. So if, you, if your rival shows their hand and they have like five more attacks and you remove one, well, you're going to need to be full blocking four attacks. And that is where I need to play a defensive seven-hander to make it work. Also, this removes at the end of the turn, and that means that it's going to be clogging your card pool for defense. So if you do this right away, you're basically giving all of your rival's moves plus one speed. Okay, but it's still very, very powerful. We get to look at our rival's hand. We get to choose the attack to remove based on what block zones we have or what's scary. Or, or if they have no attacks, we get to selectively choose the best foundation to remove or their best tech piece to remove. So very, very good, but you do have to make sure that you're playing solid defense to run it. And it really came down to what is a seven-hander on these symbols that's very defensive? The two characters it came down to was Nejire 1 on Chaos or Toya on Void. I thought about Rodan for a little bit, but I didn't want to take up slots of Barrier Shield and Combined Firepower for Rodan, so it, it didn't feel quite like it fit there. And then with Nejire, the reason I didn't go with Chaos Nejire and I went with Void Toya is because of this Godzilla Foundation Battle for Dominance. This foundation overcomes both of the weaknesses of Hold Hostage. The weaknesses of Hold Hostage is we're playing a card from our hand, and so we're, so we're losing card advantage and it um, clogs our card pool, makes everything harder to block. Well, Battle for Dominance says on our rival's turn, we can flip to remove a card from our card pool and draw a card. So there we go. We have taken Hold Hostage out of our card pool and now we've replaced Hold Hostage in our hand, right? We play this on a five, remove something, flip Battle for Dominance, remove this, and now we get to draw. This perfectly overcomes the weaknesses of hold hostage. So with hold hostage out of the way and battle for dominance, let's talk about the character um, himself, Toya. Seven hander, 20 health. If you block this attack, your rival commits one foundation. We want to be blocking everything and forcing our rival to commit their foundations. Enhance once per turn, this attack gets plus X or minus X speed. X equals the number of committed rival foundations. So on defense, this actually doesn't get too powerful until your rival's third or fourth attack, right? If we've blocked three attacks, we force them to commit three foundations with Toya. Uh, they've probably had to commit some to pass checks. And now we get to say minus four, minus five speed, basically the defensive level of like Mothra uh, on this uh, once per turn enhance here. But it's also dependent on, it gets better the better we block. This second enhance gets better on offense and on defense, the better we block. So everything is about just blocking um, as much as we can without getting speed hate on face until we get that once per turn. And then that's going to lead us, good defense is going to lead to good offense in this character. Because now the more committed foundations they have, the better this once per turn is. So we can like make a massive attack and then add eight, 10 speed on it if we've played really good defense and our rival has committed out. So it's a very, very defensive character, but it's actually uh, sneakily difficult to block because that once per turn, again, you kind of have to charge it up over the course of three or four attacks. So that is where our other action comes in 
four copies of Barrier Shield. This is definitely the best action in Toya because it's going to take their speed down to zero and it's going to say Breaker 2. So not only are we going to force them to commit a foundation with Toya, and does this give us a free block, but now we also say Breaker 2, which is going to make them commit even more foundations, which is going to make Toya even more powerful. So we love Barrier Shield. And then I've got one copy of Genkai's Guidance just to finish out the actions. Uh, it's difficult to leave home without at least one copy of Genkai's Guidance on these symbols. So that is seven actions total. We're pretty action heavy, but that's the benefit of playing a seven-hander. Seven-handers just get to play the game more than five-handers and six-handers. All right, now let's go into the attack package. How do we actually kill people? And Toya plays a really solid void punch package. And I'll talk about why each of these attacks is especially good in Toya. There's no doubt that the void symbol has taken over as the best punch symbol. But the first question is, how are we actually going to kill people? And repeated 100% smash is probably the best attack on it with powerful under the void symbol. So EX3, powerful three, we get to ready foundations for every punch. And then if we get this to 10 damage, now they can't mess with our checks anymore. This is gonna be our primary kill condition. The only downside to this is that it does gate us into playing uh, primarily punches. We don't have to play all punches. I think that's a major mistake uh, because the void punches beyond a couple different attacks, really the quality of them goes downhill. And so playing all punches is a mistake, but this is gonna be our kill condition, one of the best kill conditions on the void symbol. Then we get rejuvenating smash, which is gonna help us draw and gain health. So that really comes back down to this defensive game plan. If we wanna play solid defense, we need to be blocking everything. So rejuve, we play this, we draw two. It's also a one mid block. And then it's a great momentum out because a, a large part of our offense in Toya is poking. Uh, this is a deck where our average game length, at least tonight for me, my average game length was six or seven turns. This deck does not kill on turn two. It does not kill on turn three. We're going to get some pokes in and then we're going to build our way in. You know, we're going to like take them down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit in health. And then sometimes we can throw out these bomb repeated 100% smashes. But also if they're down to like six or so health, we can EX this to the moon, slam Toya's speed on it. If they don't have at least two resets, then they're probably going to fall to it. So that's Rejuve Smash. And then we have Rewind Throttle. This is really going to help with that poke game plan. Hey, we're going to play this five speed rewind throttle. If we put some foundations into it, this can quickly become nine speed. And then your rival has to make a very difficult decision. If they commit their stage out to block a nine speed three damage move, then I can now Toya is going to give massive speed because they've had to commit their stage out for it. So now I can follow up with an attack that actually does real damage and then give that like eight speed. So a lot of times that's just not an option for my rival. If I play this, it's, it's the freest poke in the world. I get to selectively commit down a rival resource too, which makes Toya even stronger. I'm giving speed based on number of committed rival foundations. So each of these is doing something that Toya really needs. This is how we're killing people. This is how we're drawing cards. And then this selective committal, it also draws this card, but the selective committal is gonna increase the number of committed rival foundations. That's what makes the punch package so good for Toya. I've got three other punches here, two copies of Plummeting Punch and one copy of Hardened Uppercut. Plummeting Punch is purely here for the deadlock. It has this deadlock, lose one health, flip a rival foundation, commit a rival foundation, destroy a rival foundation. I figured that the way a lot of people would be defending against Toya is just building out to a massive stage to where committing something on every block doesn't matter too much. The breaker twos, they can play through it. And because I'll always be blocking three, four, five attacks every turn, now they can play this long string. So to punish, I knew I was gonna need some really, really strong pieces to punish them building into deadlock. And that's plummeting punch. It's also just a one low block. Again, we're trying to block everything. We're in a pretty low attack heavy meta with um, Godzilla's and Black Abyss. And so it's more important than ever right now to have your low blocks. That's where Plummeting Punch comes in. 
And then one copy of Hardened Uppercut. Hey, sometimes this is going to be nine damage that we can EX to, but it's also just a nice zero high block plus minus two speed to the next thing. It's really going to help us block. So this is most of the time used as a block. Sometimes though, very fast nine damage move. And these are the punches in the deck. I'm playing a 75 card deck, by the way, with 24 attacks. So, and three of the attacks are dimensional sphere. So it's really 21 attacks. So it's a pretty low attack ratio. And then a lot of these aren't dealing a lot of damage. We're kind of dependent on these repeated 100% smashes or just slowly, again, we're, we're playing a very poke heavy game plan. We want to play one or two attacks, draw some cards, get a little bit of damage in, and then we want to hold most of our hand back for defense. So if you, if you like to play these crazy uh, win on turn two, turn three game plans, or, or you like to play all the attacks you draw, then this deck is not the deck for you because a lot of the times, even if you draw five attacks, you're only going to be playing two and then you need to hold those others to block. All right, so our non-punches. I got three Ice Sword Execution. Uh, of course, you know, this is Toya's face on it, so you know we're going to be playing it. Uh, five high five, name a foundation, commit all of it, discard momentum for plus five damage. This is also a way that we can actually kill people. This and repeat it, you know, are going to be the only moves consistently getting above 10 damage. And it's just a great string starter. Uh, we are playing some rifle arms in this deck. So if we start with this, we can pour some foundations into it, make this like a 12 speed, 10 damage move. Uh, and we get to commit our, our rival's best resources. I don't like this attack on turn two though. It's not drawing us any cards. Uh, so, yeah, so no card advantage. Um, if you don't have a momentum, it's very much just a five high five. Sometimes it's just like a five high five stun one. So on turn two and turn three, I really don't like this. But then as the game goes on, the power level of Ice Sword Execution gets bigger and bigger. And then three copies of Shards of Winter. This is gonna be more card draw. It also gets a speed for every committed rival foundation. So if we can say, pay hey, plus 10 speed with this, if it deals, I get to draw and we have the stun, which is gonna help that uh, committing game plan. So we've got this, which is basically stun, this, which is stun, and then these four cards, which are basically stun. And then my last three attacks aren't really attacks because I only play them as attacks 15% of the time. It's here basically as a defensive action, a one mid block that says we remove it before it deals damage, meaning that this is going to be our best piece of throw hate in the deck. Remember, hold hostage. If a single attack deals damage with hold hostage, they're going to be able to get their attack back that we removed. So we have to have some throw hate in the deck. That's where Dimensional Sphere comes in. Also, it's always going to allow us to uh, have the block zone we need. So if we know our rival plays mostly low attacks, we can keep like two low blocks and a Dimensional Sphere, and we should be all good. And then if they surprise us and play a high attack or a mid attack, we still got it with sphere. Sometimes I play this on offense. If I have like uh, prone to dry eyes out and I can get this damage higher, or maybe I just really need to go and find some foundations, uh, then I'll play this. Almost nobody's going to block it. And then I get to draw two and discard one. But 90% of the time we are purely playing this as a defensive action. And that is going to do it for the uh, attacks in the deck. Again, the main purpose is defensive hold hostage, force them to commit their stage down. We're not gonna kill them fast. We're gonna slowly take them down. So one of my uh, matches, actually two of my matches today was against Godzilla. Uh, round three, uh, we were both two and oh. I went two and oh against uh, Earth Godzilla. And then in the championship, I also went two and oh against Godzilla. And that was a 34 health character. So those games, took a long time, but it was just slowly, hey, I'm gonna deal six damage, I'm gonna deal three damage, sometimes I'll deal 10 damage, but I'm gonna keep a ton of cards back, Godzilla's not adding a lot of speed, and I'm just gonna block everything. And Godzilla was even playing throws, but it felt like I always had Dimensional Sphere when I needed it. Um, I, if I drew this on like turn one, I was not gonna mulligan this away going second. This is so key to have. Having this in your hand is, is a uh, big deal to staying alive. So that is the attack package. And now let's jump into the foundations. Again, Toya uh, is not helping us on our first couple blocks, but what does help us on our first couple blocks is Rifle Arm. On their first attack, if it's the only attack in their card pool, we can commit this for minus three speed. 
It's also great on our offense to establish this uh, poke attack gameplay pattern. So if we play a repeated 100% smash, this is gonna be the best foundation to ready. We play it on a five, check a five, commit this, give it three speed, re-ready this. If we have like two of these in our card pool, in our, in our stage, we can commit it, give it like six speed, ready one. If we played the repeated as our like third or fourth attack, we can just ready our rifle arms and give it extra speed and then dump our momentum into powerful. This is the most versatile foundation in the deck. If I could play five, six, seven, eight copies of it, I would, but you're only allowed to play four copies of a foundation. Then we got four copies of incubating, remove a card for minus one speed. We're playing a 75 card deck. So we, even though we're playing a long game, we, we shouldn't be milling out even with a couple incubatings in our stage, but this is gonna go a long way to helping us get those blocks. And then last piece of speed hate here, three copies of evasive maneuver. It's a two high block that commits for minus two speed. And then we're in a low attack heavy meta. And if they're playing a low attack, you get to commit for minus three speed. So I like it even as just a commit for minus two speed and a solid block, but it's so much better when your opponent is playing lows. I'll go into like a round by round analysis, by the way, at the end of this. Um, but what about when we can't block? When we can't block, but we've used hold hostage. Well, then we've got a couple copies of, oops, uh, a couple copies of Cape of No Return, a couple copies of Condescending Explanation, and a couple copies of Spooky. These are gonna be all ways where we're not taking damage. We can use our Toya once per turn, to give them a lot of minus speed, commit and swap it. We can use our momentum that we're getting from all these pokes to flip their attack, or you can use like Cape of No Return and just remove it. I would like to play three of this if I could, but I'm already playing seven actions. So, um, you know, two is, is about what felt right. But these are all ways we can take no damage despite not blocking. Then we need card advantage and we need momentum for repeated 100% smash. So Hacker Extraordinaire is gonna accomplish both of those goals. If we do take damage, hey, we get the momentum for repeated, uh, or we can just draw. It's also going to flip an asset. I got to flip a couple Cape of No Returns today that made all the difference in winning the game. Couple copies of Can't Escape Me. Uh, I never leave without this. This didn't come up today at all though. It might be the foundation that I cut, honestly, from the deck. Might just be more sideboard material. But it was also there for the deadlock because um, I don't want them building like crazy into deadlock and then Toya not mattering as much. I want them to fear going into deadlock. Speaking of fearing going into deadlock, I've got practical studies. It's gonna help us get pokes through and it's the deadlock of plus three speed and seal something. And then we actually have to kill them. So we've got prone to dry eyes. We could discard a card for plus one to our damage for the rest of the turn. And now these three, four damage moves are becoming five, six, seven, eight damage. It's also going to help Rejuvenating Smash actually get momentum because now we've discarded a card and we can go and grab momentum. I always like to have, I never like to play Rejuvenating Smash without getting that free momentum at least 50% of the time. So speaking of getting the free momentum, it's not just uh, prone to dry eyes. We've got Botons Coaching, four copies of Botons Coaching. Flip, we're both gonna discard and draw. Now I get that free momentum off Rejuve. On defense, if I have zero cards in hand, this is just a flip to draw. Very, very solid. Uh, four easily excited and just for the speed on the pokes. And then two copies of keeping Airy safe. I really want this strong build early as a seven-hander that needs to block very quickly. And so 10 zero diffs felt about right. Let's just put these down here, and that takes us to our one ofs. So I've got one copy of Psy Specialist. If I block with the foundation, I get to build it. Never really came up today. Uh, disarming Glance. I've got a lot of ways to remove rival attacks and stop them from resolving. So having the super combo of I'll flip, you can't get cards to your hand, and now I'll make you abort the attack seemed fun. Uh, didn't really come up too much today either though. A copy of Citywide Crisis to return an attack back to print speed and then an Icy Blade to also help us um, get damage, and it's going to help stop our rival from readying their stage. And that is the foundations for the deck. So that is all 75 cards.
for Toya. I'll go pretty quickly into my sideboard and then I'll just give you guys a round by round recap of tonight. My sideboard was as I was searching through my binders to find um, cards to sleeve up because I made this deck yesterday. <laughs> I made this deck on Friday and then played it uh, tonight, which is Saturday. So as I was going through to find cards and go through each binder, I keep my uh, rare and ups in terms of rarity um, in binders. So as I was going through my binders, I was just pulling out void cards that seemed like, yeah, maybe maybe this could come up. So a couple copies of Stopping for Breakfast, you know, Stop Actions, a couple copies of Blood Curdle. If I was going against a character that uh, had strong defense on face, I actually got to Blood Curdle down Mirio tonight. I can't remember if it ended up mattering or if I did it just because I could do it and it seemed cool. Uh, two copies of Learning the Standards. Never cited them in tonight. A uh, copy of Unbreakable, Web of Blades, a decoy, which I put in a couple times, then a pass through walls if they had an asset. So again, I was just going through my binder. Hey, does this seem good for Toya? I'll throw it in. It, you know, does this seem good in specific matchups is how I do the sideboard. So that was Toya. Um, I built this deck yesterday. And then let me see. I'll just put out the key cards here. Let's put out the key cards. There you go. I built this deck yesterday. I played a teammate in a quick practice round just to just to kind of get the play patterns of Toya down. I still misplayed a lot tonight, even with that practice. But I played against Ymir last night and ended up going 2-0. I had one hand where I was holding on to double barrier shield, two blocks, and a hold hostage. And, uh, you know, I just clutched those cards for like two turns as I was just like playing one attack, building two, because it was like, I know if I play solid defense, I can win on the backswing from this. So that was my practice. And then tonight, my first round was against Mirio. Uh, I took that round 2-1. Yet I told you I, I blood curdled him on uh, game three, I think it was. On game two, I lost turn two. I full blocked two things and they still played four more attacks. They were playing this crazy Mirio list that was playing Lightning Rod, uh, even though Mirio can't change the zone, just to build two and then combo into the um, double jab pummel to help out your checks. And then they were, you know, of course, then you can Valiant Assault and combo that with the double jab pummel. Uh, they had their Phantom Threats. They had, they were even playing some Falling Skies just for early turns, just to get momentum for Mirio. So really interesting Mirio list. Uh, Air Mirio getting to play some. Uh, falling Skies and Lightning Rods. Uh, they were calling high almost all the time. I assume that's because, hey, I can't chase the zone of Lightning Rod. I might as well just make everything high. But I still held low blocks all the time. Um, just barely got through, barely got through that round. Next round, I played Asui 3. Two very, very defensive characters going up against each other. I ended up getting it 2-0. Uh, in game two, I had my favorite play of the night when I drew into both of my hold hostages. I had hardly any defense on stage, uh, maybe four or five ready foundations. I figured I was going to get to block once, maybe twice, and that was it. Uh, I was likely dead, but I had double hold hostage and a couple cards in hand for, for blocks. And he played an attack. I played hold hostage. He showed me a hand with only two attacks in it. So I removed one of them. And then I went for the double hold hostage. I removed the other attack. Now he has no more attacks. Um, I full blocked his attack. He did use Asui to draw a card, but drew into a foundation and couldn't do it. And so I won that game on the backswing. Double hold hostage coming in clutch. So now I was 2-0. and Then I went against Godzilla, Earth Godzilla. Uh, again, over the tournament, I was 4-0 against Earth Godzilla. They did get unlucky a couple times, but it felt like a matchup that was very much in my favor. Uh, even though Godzilla was throwing out these huge moves and I'm only 20 health, just felt like I could block everything. Um, yeah, it was like, okay, I know that most of these attacks are low, so I'll keep my low blocks. I'll keep a sphere for the throw or I'll cape the throw because uh, he was playing some Aura Slams. And then he was playing some Titan Clefts. And so it was like, well, sometimes I'll keep a high block. And it just ended up that I could just block everything. And then just slowly whittle the Godzilla down from 34 to 27 to 20 to 10, you know, and, and just slowly make it out. So um, survived through a couple Godzilla forms where they wiped the stage, but I was able to keep my asset, Cape of No Return. 
it just felt like a matchup very, very much in my favor. So I went 3-0. Now I'm going to top four. In my top four match, I played my brother, who was playing Death Kirishima 3, and he was playing this very, very heavy Foundation Destruction. But I got to go first since I was the top overall seed, and that ended up being a big difference maker because it allows me to just to get a few build turns out. So now Kirishima 3 is not going to be such a big deal that he's absolutely nuking my stage every single turn. Uh, game 3 actually came down to the wire. I had to pass a Barrier Shield on a 6, and then a Dimensional Sphere, even though I had him down to 0 speed, uh, because I had 4 cards in my card pool, I still had to check a 5 on my Dimensional Sphere to block. I was at 5 health. Sorry guys, my computer had a slight issue, so I had to take a quick pause. But yeah, I was at 5 health. They had Red Riot. They had played Red Riot Unbreakable. Uh, my brother did, and he had Kirishima to lose 2 health if I partial. So I blocked with the dim Dimensional Sphere. I checked a 5 on it, which means I got it off. I had hardly any resources at this time. And so because of that, I had to play the response on it. But I couldn't say Breaker 2 from the Barrier Shield. The Barrier Shield took the speed down to 0, but I wasn't allowed to say Breaker 2 because if I said Breaker 2, I'd lose another 2 health, and then I would have lost 6 health and lost the game. So I could only Dimensional Sphere respond to remove the attack there, so I didn't take any damage there. And then I lost the two damage from Kirishima. So I was down to one health and my brother just couldn't pass one last attack because this would have been like his fifth attack. So, and I got to use hold hostage that turn and remove something, meaning that I knew his last attack was a six difficulty attack that he wasn't, that he now had to play on a 10. I think he only had like three ready resources. So I won on the backswing, just kind of crazy turn there where I hold hostage blocked like three or four things. And then I had to check a five on a barrier shield and on a dimensional sphere in order to be able to block. So then I went back to the finals where I once again played against Godzilla. This Godzilla had, other than me, uh, won every round, right? He won his semifinals rounds. He won his other two rounds in Swiss. Uh, but once again, I won, just kind of able to take over the game. And uh, again, felt like a pretty okay matchup uh, for me there. And that was my that was my round. So this weekend, uh, yesterday I went, 1-0 in practice, and then today I went 5-0 with Toya. Now I'm going to de-sleeve the deck and probably never play Toya again. <laughs> you know, this was just a great time tonight, but ultimately if I was going to play a Void deck similar to the one I did, I'd probably just play Rodan and put in some combined firepower so that I can actually kill people more consistently. You know, and I'd probably kind of quit it out with Hold Hostage, but this action felt very, very good. Every time I played it, it actually worked. About 80, I'd say... 90% of the time I played it, it worked tonight. And then even when it didn't work, it actually did work. For example, there was one time on turn two where I played Hold Hostage. I removed an attack. They had a handful of attacks. And they kept on attacking me on turn two uh, to get their attack back. And eventually they did get their attack back, but then they had to destroy a foundation on turn two. Uh, now they had three attacks in their card pool, so it was going to make a difficult build out. And so it actually kind of worked, you know, they got their attack back, sure, but at the expense of hurting their stage and hurting their build post attack. So even when it didn't work, it actually worked for me. I think this secret rare is very, very slept on. It just takes a defensive seven hander to truly unlock it. I didn't really look at the evil symbol. I think Neji Ray won. There was definitely something there on Neji Ray won. You could also play... Uh, What's the foundation? Confused, the flip, remove remove something from their discard pile. You could play like Confused and you could play some Deception Daggers in Nejire 1 plus the whole Hostage plus Capes. You could play like 20 something cards that selectively remove an attack. Uh, Dimensional Sphere removes and you still get it on the Chaos symbol. Do you still get it on the Chaos symbol? Don't, I don't wanna misspeak here. You do still get it on the chaos symbol. So even with like Nezure 1, the fun aspect would have been like you have this secondary mill game plan where you have 20 cards that remove an attack. Uh, but Toya just seemed better to get access to battle for dominance and repeated 100% smash and this punch package that really combos well with this character. So very, very happy with how tonight went. But now I'm moving on to Attack on Titan. I've got a ton of Attack on Titan stuff coming out this week. I've got character rankings, secret rare rankings, uh, a box opening this week. I'm going to try and do all of this before Friday, guys. So I'm going to have like a video out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Everything's going to be 
Attack on Titan focused. Uh, very, very excited for it. I've already got my little presentations on my character rankings and secret rare rankings ready. I think you guys are going to be in for some surprises that I have on those. Uh, yeah, and then my next spotlight tournament for locals is going to be August 30. I mean, my next tournament for locals is going to be August 31st. It's going to be local qualifier, and it's going to be Attack on Titan Spotlight. So not only am I de-sleeving this deck, I am saying goodbye to standard for a little bit. And for the next month, I'm almost exclusively going to be testing Attack on Titan Spotlight. So we'll see how this is. But uh, keep an eye out because I'll have a ton of stuff. I'll see you guys next time.